Hi, I'm Mark, and this is Let's Vibe, the channel all about crystals and our feelings. So today is the new moon in Leo, and obviously we are in Leo season now. Um, this is basically my half birthday, <laughs> um, because I have my son in Aquarius, my birthday's in February, and the opposite sign of Aquarius is Leo, and I have my moon and rising signs both in Leo. So I always like August and Leo season. And I, the last couple of weeks I was thinking about what crystal um, I could share for Leo season. And what I settled on is not a crystal, it's actually a precious metal. And that is gold. So I've got a little vial here of gold flakes. This used to be filled with water, but I bought this when I was probably about eight years old. <laughs> and the water has long since evaporated. But you've got, I, you can see the gold flakes in there. I think this was only 25 cents when I bought it. And it's gold from Wyoming. And actually, um, well, I do have some other gold flakes from Montana but uh, it's the same thing, so I'll just I'll just show these ones. Um, obviously, a very beautiful metal, a precious metal. Um, gold flakes are pretty inexpensive, so they're it's easy to buy gold flakes. You don't have to spend a whole bunch of money because gold obviously is very, very expensive. <laughs> um, so gold is very much a Leo, it has a Leo energy. It's very much the energy of the sun, which is the ruler of Leo. It's got that brightness, it's got that shine, that brilliance. And gold really has, you know, it's not just beautiful to look at um, and, and to wear in jewelry, but gold has a really beautiful energy. It's a bright energy. It's, it's energizing like the sun. Uh, when I hold these gold flakes, I get this really beautiful, warm, energy around me. It's, it's comforting. It's calming. Gold is great at releasing tension, um, releasing anger, frustration. It's calming and relaxing. It really helps stabilize the emotions and it's grounding. Gold also symbolizes divinity and connection with the divine, connection with source and the spiritual realms. Gold is great for getting in touch with your own inner divine spark, the part of you that, that soul level part of you that is of the divine, um, a part of source. And, and so gold is, is, is easily a, a great help in strengthening your connection with spirit and um, connecting with higher spiritual vibrations. Um, obviously, gold represents wealth and abundance. Um, and it really it definitely has that energy of, of wealth and abundance. It's, um, it's 
an enlightening kind of energy, spiritually enlightening and emotionally enlightening, mentally enlightening. It's illuminating. Um, it's protective. It is protective against lower vibrations. And overall, it's, it's just a gold is very strengthening. Um, I just got this image of the strength card in the tarot, uh, which is also associated with Leo, um, along with, of course, the sun card. But it is strengthening. It does provide or Im imparts that energy of inner strength and um, and an energy of love, an energy of divine love, an energy of, of beauty, <clears throat> physical beauty and inner beauty. I think gold is something that can help. You know, gold was often used um, in the practice of alchemy or or for the purpose of, you know, alchemy was used for the purpose of trying to create gold. So it really does connect with spiritual and energetic alchemy. And I see that as like, in, in this context, like bringing together the high vibrational spiritual with the physical worlds, um, because gold represents both you know, the physical wealth and physical pleasures that the earth has to offer, that this world and the universe has to offer, but also that spiritual wealth that we can tap into. I just, I think it's a great gold flakes or any kind of gold that you have um, is a great way to get in tune with that energy of abundance and, um, you know, that's something I've had to learn to get in tune with, um, coming out of an energy of lack, a mindset of lack and scarcity. Gold has helped me learn what abundance feels like and what an energy of wealth feels like. So it really is, it is just perfect for Leo season. And um, I'll show you, I've got my, <laughs> I've got my Madonna merch on. This is from her celebration tour this past year. <laughs> and the reason I'm wearing uh, my Madonna shirt is because um, Madonna is famously a Leo. Uh, Leo Sun. <laughs> so, if you think of Madonna, um, she really embodies that Leo energy. Um, she obviously really loves that spotlight. And um, if you follow her on Instagram, she, <laughs> you know, it's it's like Leo full force. Um, so I just had to put that on for this video. But um, yeah, gold is, is really a, an incredible metal, um, metaphysically speaking. And I'd recommend um, anyone who's working with crystals and other um, natural substances, um, I'd recommend finding some gold flakes for yourself. Um, As far as a, a song, I, I'm going to get into, I, I wanted to talk about some other things um, besides just gold and Leo season in this video. But um, before I get to that, I will give you this, I'll give you the song uh, so I don't forget uh, by the end. But <laughs> the song that I settled on for gold 
is the song Conceited, and in parentheses, there's something about Remy, by Remy Ma. <laughs> I'm not a huge Remy Ma fan, but um, this is from her older album, album titled There's Something About Remy. And I was just listening to the song earlier, and it's a, it's a really fun song, but it's also just a song that embodies that whole vibe of wealth and seeing yourself in the mirror and seeing beauty, seeing hotness, seeing the beautiful things that you have, beautiful clothes or jewelry or just your surroundings and celebrating that. Um, and she's got some good lines in the song. My favorite being, who's that looking in my window? Nobody, because I live in a penthouse. <laughs> that line always uh, makes me laugh a little. Um, so I just, I just think it's a great song for the energy of gold. So I will include a link to Conceited by Remy Ma in the description box below. And so with, with that all being said about golds, I did really want to just talk and share some recent experiences that I've had uh, spiritually, spiritual experiences. Um, because I've, I've realized that, and I've, I've known for a while that I, I don't, I don't really share my spiritual experiences, which are often in the form of visions. Um, it could be during like meditation, journeying, uh, sometimes in the form of like a trance. Um, and sometimes those trance states are triggered by um, a particular crystal that I happen to pick up. Um, but I, I, I typically don't share about these experiences and the things that I see in these trance states and in my journeying and, and visions. Um, Partly because most of the people in my social circle and, you know, friends and family, they're not really so much into the spiritual world and, and the metaphysical. And, and so it wouldn't really be appropriate or make any sense to talk about these things with them. But also I've held back a lot of stuff because a lot of these experiences have felt very sacred and very, very, very personal to me. And so I've, I've been very slow or hesitant to share um, about them. And, and also I've, I've wondered, you know, my logical mind comes into the mix and I've wondered, you know, is it even applicable to other people? You know, is it, is there even a, a usefulness or a point in, in, telling others about it. But I was thinking, you know, I follow a bunch of different tarot readers and channelers on YouTube and quite a few of them, especially recently, have been sharing some very powerful and deep um, spiritual awakening experiences that they've had, visions that they've had, or full on like out-of-body experiences that they've had. And some of them, or all of them, really, all of them, they're, they're sharing from a very authentic place. And they're sharing the kinds of things that I've struggled with. I've struggled to share because I've, you know, another, another part of the whole hesitancy has been, it sounds weird. <laughs> You know, the spiritual world sounds weird. It can sound a little crazy. It can sound a little, you know, not just a little, but a lot way out there. And I've, I've struggled with, you know, 
going into that weird stuff and, and, and talking about it. And, you know, that has to do with my own fear of being seen and fear of being judged. And, but I've been listening to these tarot readers and, um, one guy in particular, uh, his name is Austin and, um, he, I believe his name is Austin, um, <laughs> but he runs the channel Autistic Mystic, and he's been sharing some of his own awakenings and discoveries uh, as he's been studying his own astrology in depth, and he's just been sharing some very really out there stuff, really out there um, revelations that he's had. And um, and another guy that I follow, he's not a tarot reader, um, at least I don't think he is, but he's more of a spiritual mentor and coach. Um, and he runs a channel, I'm blanking on his name, but he runs a channel on YouTube called Vibes and Frequencies. I will include links to both of their channels in the description box. But he recently shared a story about just an incredible, basically out of body experience and a spiritual awakening experience that he had. And it was really beautiful and, and also very, very out there. So I just figured, you know what? <laughs> I'm having quite a few experiences lately. And in the last few months, a lot of experiences, a lot of spiritual upgrades, awakenings, revelations. Um, so I just, and I had some last night and I thought, you know what? Why don't I just share about some of these things, some of these things of my own so last night I was with a couple close friends of mine. We were just hanging out, hanging out on my friend's lanai. It was night and um, the sky was clear. It was, you know, good weather here in Hawaii. <laughs> and I had some really powerful, um, moments as I was sitting there with my friends. Um, and I've been going through my own, like, second awakening or maybe third awakening experience. And I've been really, you know, this time around, it's really been focused on fully stepping into myself and my authentic self like <laughs> like no more playing around um really stepping into my power um my authentic power my inner power personal power and um let's see well let me just start a few days before this so last week, I'll start there. Last week, I was at my friend's place, same two friends. We were sitting on the lanai and I had another, I had a, a huge revelation that, and it was this realization that I am, in essence, what you would call a preacher. <laughs> um, and that hit me really hard. That was, that was a major eye-opening moment because I have hated <laughs> preachers and pastors for many years now. I grew up in the church. I spent almost 30 years in the church attending 
faithfully. I was very loyal to the church. I was very gung-ho about serving the church and being part of the church community. Um, and I experienced a lot of hurt, a lot of deep wounds, a lot of very painful experiences during my time in the church. And a lot of that had to do with my own authentic self, like being gay and, and that kind of stuff. And so that created a lot of conflict, a lot of inner conflict and a lot of outer conflicts. And so I had a lot of experiences with pastors and preachers and priests and a lot of, they were largely very, very painful. And so for years I've been working on bringing healing to those wounds and releasing resentments and anger, rage towards the, these spiritual authority figures, because that's what they are. And, and during this healing period, I've also at the same time been coming into more of my authentic self, as I said, which includes, which involves the fact that I have a very, very independent sense of spirituality. I'm, I'm very independent with my spirituality, with my spiritual beliefs. And I'm very vocal. I have this very deep compulsion to speak about the spiritual truths that I've experienced and discovered along my journey. But not just sharing what I've discovered, I also love and I'm very passionate about speaking out against what I see as false falsehoods and injustice in spirituality, specifically within the church and within Christianity. And I've been sharing a lot of those thoughts and opinions and beliefs on other platforms, uh, like TikTok. <laughs> and, um, but it really just, it didn't dawn on me fully that I am essentially being or taking on, stepping into that very role that I hated for so long. And that role that, that hurt, that hurt me in so many ways. And so last week, it just, it hit me so hard. Like, I am, for lack of a better word, a preacher, a spiritual teacher, a spiritual guide, um, a speaker. I love, <laughs> I love public speaking. I love it. Um, I also love writing. I'm very passionate about writing. And I use both of those skills to express um, my spiritual beliefs and, and to speak out against the things that I was taught growing up that I've learned are false. And to speak out against the injustices that I've experienced and that I know many others have experienced in religious institutions like the church. So, and what's kind of obvious and also funny about it is that my North Node is in Aries in the ninth house, which is the house ruled by Sagittarius. And that house is, that house covers the realm of religion and institutions and um, and also exploration and um, being independent. You know, with Aries, 
in the mix. That's independence. That's I am. That's our identity as individuals. Going our own way. Being confident. Being... Um, somewhat rebellious and so really it it, it all fits together perfectly it, it's it's really even though it hit hard and it brought up some intense emotions it it's not a surprise <laughs> it really isn't and the emotions that came up with it were intense they were it was like in a sense humbling and it also brought up feelings of shame or maybe not shame, embarrassment. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm, I'm, you know, taking on that kind of role, a pastor, preacher, like I've had so many negative connotations tied to that label, that title, that role. And so realizing that that was my role, that that is my authentic self and authentic role, it, it brought up some of those negative connections and emotions that I've held. So that happened last week. And it also unlocked like, a whole bunch of new energy. I felt kind of hyper <laughs> for a few days following that revelation. And I just felt like I had an excess of energy around me. Um, and it was, it, it was good though. It was very uplifting, empowering. Um, it felt exciting. And then last night, like I said, I had another revelatory moment and let's see, I, oh, the first thing that came, well, no, yeah, the, the very first thing that came to mind, because what, what's going on is I, I start receiving visuals. That's, that's really how it, how it goes. I start receiving visuals and then there's, you know, there's a lot of energy along with those vi visuals that I'm feeling that we're sensing. And so the visual that came to mind and it was very strong, um, very, uh, rather vivid. It was this visual of, of myself. It was like I was seeing a reflection of myself. And all of a sudden I could see the reflection ripple and like dissipate as if, as if I had been looking into a pool of water, like still water and it ripples and the image that I had, the reflection that I was seeing disappeared. But then came a new reflection, a new image of myself and it was a much more empowered reflection of myself. It was a very beautiful reflection of my own self. And very quickly, or all of a sudden, I also got this image of a person, but rather alien-like. And I just knew instinctively I mean, it was resonating very powerfully with me, but I knew that I was seeing a very deep, a very deep, deeply authentic vision or image of myself. And it was a really, it was very mystical. It was very, um, it was very beautiful. There was a lot of blue. Um, this image of, of this person, this being, um, 
was really basically covered in blue. Like, it kind of, at one point it kind of looked like blue butterflies, but then it also looked like blue rays, like blue rays of light. Like a, maybe, maybe like a blue crystalline rays. And I was, and, and this being, this person was just covered, completely covered in these blue rays. And it was just incredibly beautiful. It was, it was like, I felt like I was seeing myself and my soul identity for the first time. And um, very, very powerful, yeah. And, um, and then I look up at the sky, you know, we're sitting on the lanai, got the night sky, full view of the stars, and just right smack in the middle of the sky, like spanning a big portion of the sky, was the constellation Scorpio. And if you've seen the constellation Scorpio, it's this long curling shape um, with like three or four stars lined perpendicular at the end and it, and it looks like a scorpion's tail and it was just bam right there full view the the whole thing um you know scorpio is located in the southern hemisphere of the the southern hemisphere in astrology um and because of the because of hawaii's position on the globe, on Earth, and the, yeah, um, we're, we're able to see, you're able to see Scorpio um, from Hawaii. And it just, it just really hit home for me. Scorpio is, that's ruled by Pluto, and Pluto is all about transformation death and rebirth. It's also about wealth in a very physical sense of, of the term. And um, depth, emotional depth. And I just felt like it was just a very clear message to me of, you know, this has been a transformative experience. Um, the last few months and really the last several years have been deeply transformative. Um, so it was just really beautiful to see that constellation um, with the star Draco. I think Draco is at the very tip of that curling of the stinger. And... Um, was just so powerful. I was really feeling that scorpionic, plutonic energy. It was beautiful. And then, you know, I was just really, by that point, I was really feeling some very high vibrational energies. My crown chakra was wide open. My third eye was wide open. Um, really, all of my chakras felt wide open and stable and secure. And then we, you know, we continued to hang out. I didn't say anything to my friends about what was going on, but we continued to hang out and eventually we watched a movie. It was this new, this new horror movie that came out recently <laughs> called Tarot. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous, but it's also kind of fun. Um, as many horror movies are. But what was funny about it all was as I was just in that high vibration frequency, I felt like 
everything was speaking to me. And and it wasn't just a feeling. It I knew, you know, it was speaking to me. It was the universe was speaking. The universe was speaking in everything, every little thing. I was seeing synchronicities. I was hearing messages. As we're watching this ridiculous movie, there were things popping up in the film that were just funny little synchronicities that I could resonate with. Even messages that I felt were just like spirit, just speaking, speaking through this film. Um, at one point, the character even talks about the power of the Aquarius Leo axis, <laughs> which is a huge part. That's a huge part of my birth chart, that axis of Aquarius and Leo with, you know, sun in Aquarius, moon and ascendant in Leo. It was hilarious and it was incredible and beautiful and just and 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 not just that it wasn't just synchronicities and little messages it was i was getting like bam bam these images of how everything in my life is a reflection of what Everything is a reflection of myself. Everything in everything around me and everything going on in my life is a reflection of me. And I was just getting very clear images and messages of that were just showing me how all of these details in my own personal life were reflecting truths going on within me. And it was just really just kind of left me in awe, you know, and and one of the one of the first things that came to that came up and, and also that kind of hit me hard was I realized um, I suddenly realized I've got some jealousy that I've been holding on to. And what was so funny was what came, I, 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 I think I was on, I had browsed Instagram a little bit while I was on the Lanai. And I came across a profile of this guy that I follow. Um, and he's a very, he's a cute guy. Um, I've chatted with him a little bit, but I don't know him personally. But he shares a lot on Instagram just about his his life his life his social life and he does a lot of fun things he he works a job that affords him a lot of freedom and financial freedom to do the things that he loves and so he shares a lot of that on Instagram and he loves going to all the all the fun gay events <laughs> that gay guys like to go to um and really, it's it's all stuff that I've been wanting to do. And he's going to events that I've really been wanting to go to. And he's got a lot of pictures of his friends and his lovers, <laughs> I guess. Boyfriends, lovers, whatever you want to call them. Um, and again, it, it's stuff that I want in my life. I'm looking for partnership. I'm looking for that romance and that erotic love and um, just just passionate connection with with others and I suddenly realized I've been holding on to a very subtle energy and feeling of jealousy every because for weeks now or months i've been skipping over his posts and other people's posts as well not just him and i was telling myself you know i just i i don't know i i think i told myself like i'm tired of his content i've i've you know 
I'm not interested right now. <laughs> and I think I was really just kidding myself. Because the truth is, the truth was, I was a little bit jealous, you know, seeing other guys, other people doing the things that I've been wanting to do, things that I've been trying to manifest and, you know, sharing it with the world. And I was a little bit jealous. And what was hilarious is I was suddenly reminded of many tarot readings that I have seen on YouTube. Many tarot readings that I've seen over the last, in the last month or so, talking about jealousy. And there's one tarot reader in particular. She's been pulling this card. It's an oracle card. It just says jealousy. And it's got a picture of the blue and white evil eye. And I just, I, I saw it so clearly in my mind and I heard her saying, someone's really jealous. <laughs> And, you know, when it comes to tarot readings, you take what resonates and leave what doesn't, you know, for, for general readings like this. And so every time I saw, you know, the message about jealousy, I would think, you know, who, who might be jealous of me? Um, you know, are some of my friends jealous? Are some of my acquaintances jealous? It's entirely possible. But really, the real message trying to come through is that I, I've been jealous. <laughs> I've got some jealousy in me that needs to be released. And, you know, that may seem kind of small, you know, not a big deal. We've all wrestled with jealousy. We, we all get jealous from time to time. But what was so special and powerful about this particular revelation was that I realized I got to let go of this jealousy if I ever want to open up and receive that abundance that I've been wanting so bad. I've got to open up to receive that. And that means releasing the constriction and the tightness that jealousy and envy bring. I've got to be willing to release that and just let my heart open to take in all of that beauty, all of that abundance and wealth that I've been trying to bring in. So that was just, it was really a, a very powerful moment. Um, and and it, it got me in touch with the energy that I needed to get in touch with, which is that energy of opening. And what's really funny is I was at the same time as all of those images and thoughts were coming up in that moment, I was also seeing, and I forgot to look up the name of this snake, but I was seeing this very specific species of snake. And it's a, it's a light green color of snake and this is the this is the snake you may have seen pictures of it or you may have seen it on TV you know the nature channel discovery channel it's a snake that eats birds eggs <laughs> and it's and so you know snakes like that they have to unhinge their jaw and it's crazy because if you see it, if you see a video or a photo of it, this it's this skinny snake opening its mouth like this <laughs> to swallow a whole giant egg. <laughs> and that's the image that came into my mind last night, sitting there on the lanai of that snake just opening its jaw to these ridiculous proportions to swallow this huge egg. And not only for me, not only did that symbolize the act of opening myself up to receive the fullness of what I'm trying to manifest and what my heart desires, but it also 
it also um, impressed upon me the thought that, you know what? This is so ridiculous. How crazy that this snake, this, this animal, <laughs> you know, snakes eat all kinds of different animals. And a lot of snakes eat animals that don't require them to unhinge their jaw to this extreme. And this snake here, this green species of snake, doesn't give a crap. <laughs> like, this snake doesn't care. He wants to eat that giant bird's egg. And so what is he going to do? He's going to just unhook his jaw <laughs> and eat that egg whole. And he doesn't care. Mother Nature doesn't care how wild and seemingly impractical that is. Mother Nature didn't say to that snake, what are you talking about? Just eat the small eggs. You know, you don't have to go to those lengths. Just find a tiny egg or, or find some other animal that is easier to swallow. No. <laughs> this snake is going after that giant egg <laughs> and he's gonna eat it whole. And I just thought that is such a beautiful symbol and metaphor of, of authenticity, of just being my own weird self and going after whatever it is that my heart is desiring, even if it looks impossible to swallow. It's not impossible. I just need to be my weird, authentic self and open up and receive it. And so that was just, those were, those were my, um, my spiritual visions and moments of awakening that I've had in the last week. And I just, I really wanted to share that. And I wanted to join the party of, of channelers and spiritual mentors sharing the wild stuff that that happens when we open to source, when we open to the divine and we allow ourselves to move in the flow. It really is an incredible and beautiful experience. So I hope, um, you know, maybe some of you can resonate with that or maybe some of you have had some of your own wild spiritual experiences, awakenings, revelations. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for listening, and um, I encourage you to leave a comment down below. I love to hear from you, and once again, thank you so much for vibing with me.